Fire! 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 Fire. Episode 134. 131, sorry. I don't know what possessed me to say that. Wow. I really don't know what possessed me to say that. 172. Uh, 199, whatever. I don't think anyone's actually keeping track except what it says online. So, um, so many things. All right, back from Boss Bastin. Um, and uh, Foxwoods, the casino. Um, what are we drinking? Well, this is a beer that they say in Boston is like their PBR. It's uh, called Narganz. It's actually made in Rhode Island. Pawtucket. Wherever that, Pawtucket? Pawtucket. 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 I can't read that. You know why? Because I have on Lewis's reading glasses. Because I stole them because I went to his house and I didn't have my glasses and I couldn't read nothing. So I said, do you have any reading glasses? Because he always wears real <laughs> prescription eyeglasses. And then he came, out, he came out of his room and he's like, these are $50. And I said, oh well, God. I will pay you. To rent them, I'm going to give them back. But then I like them so much, I'm like, no, I'm not giving them back. I'm not paying you, Lou. You make enough money. You don't need fifty dollars. <laughs> Who buys fifty dollars reading glasses? Mine, uh, Foster Grants from Walgreens, Ooh. sometimes on sale for fourteen. Excellent. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're drinking. So much fun. Some shout outs from Foxwoods to uh, so much stuff backstage. It makes the the ushers are always like, does this happen all the time? I'm like, yes, just keep bringing it back. Heather and Kristen bought some chips and some box wine. I take pictures of everything because sometimes I leave the stuff for the staff if I can't get it home or I want to share it. Or it's interesting. Or they've drank it. <laughs> right. Foxwoods, Billy and Jen, they brought the Guinness salt shakers. Oh, yeah, they're right here. See, look how adorable. If you have YouTube, see, here, I'll show you. They're, um, they're sp it's a Guinness split in half, salt and pepper. Adorable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. And a flower pen that somebody had to tell me was a pen because I didn't understand. I picked it out. And I'm like, what is this flower? Um, Excellent. Pam and Deb and Melissa, New Hampshire termite. No, they brought, yeah, they're New Hampshire termites. They brought, uh, that is so great because like Midwest people, I can't believe going to Foxwoods from Boston, I went from Massachusetts to Rhode Island to Connecticut all within an hour and 20 minutes. In the Midwest, you ain't leaving your state for at least <laughs> It's so confusing to me. Like, if you kicked me out of a car without a phone, uh -huh. I would just be like a time traveler lost. Right. I wouldn't know what state I was in. Um, they brought a lot of stuff. That was a Foxwood. That's a wonderful casino gig, and it's a wonderful casino. Yeah. If I lived up there, I would definitely be there way, way, way too often. <laughs> uh, guaranteed. Exactly. It's a lot of fun. It's a DraftKings casino. Yes, they have a DraftKings bar now. Yeah, and the staff there runs like clockwork. I walk in, sound check takes five seconds. Same with the Wilbur in Boston. Um, I was there uh, Saturday for two shows. Uh, Sarah Silverman, I guess, had been there before me, taping something for something. I don't know if those are secrets, so I won't spill them. But um, uh, Boston, they brought this beer and all kinds of other treats. Lots of cat treats. That's a shout-out to Ashley and Mike because they brought cat treats. And those are easy to get home. And Baby Cat's so excited. <laughs> yeah, so is Chapo. He's not as expressive. But, uh, and then Kato always gives me the kind of fuck off. I'll eat him later. Just leave him there. Don't come near me. Don't come near me. Um, yeah, Baby Cat loves them. The greenies, but there's other things too. The purees. It, that is like throwing icing on something. And they, I could put just anything out there. But if I put the puree on it, they're all in. Um Karen and Greg, they brought uh, the uh, beer dip recipe. Um, appreciate that. There's yeah, so. We're gonna make that. I well, if I could be home for more than a goddamn nanosecond, make it um, Sunday. this summer what? I hope you make it for Master Sunday. I'll make it for Master Sunday. I did yeah. take that off because it's also Easter, and I don't know Easter weekend now. It seems hard to sell the same amount of tickets as a normal weekend. Yeah. I think people do family stuff or whatever. I don't know. Oh, I got Cheetos popcorn. This from Heather and Sean, I think, or Shaw, Sean, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, the El Chapo book, they brought me a book on El Chapo, can't wow. wait, great plain reading. Goldfish, yeah, I already got into those, because they're red hot. Frank's Red Hot Goldfish, oh, yes, nice. the best. Um, Danielle and Jeff, uh, a cigar, which I'm going to save for Ron, and then I'll just take puffs off of it. I don't want to <laughs> waste it on me. Um, nice pint glass. Wicked crack, Irish Al, wicked crack. Oh my gosh, there's so many. 
Um, Shelby from Vermont. See, how do people in Vermont end up in Massachusetts? I don't even know if Vermont is, is Vermont connected. I don't even know. Do they border one another? No. No? Okay. That's why I never know where I'm at. Oh, Maine's in the middle? No. We're going to do it. And I've been to all these places. I know. But that's how they must feel in the Midwest. Like, they don't know if they're in Kansas or Iowa or Missouri. Um, Brought a lot of Vermont stuff. Vermont beer, Vermont jerky, and um, the stuffed Nessie right here. Oh, fuck. (laughs) The Loch Ness. I'm going to go scare the shit out of baby cat with it. (laughs) She she does all this. Yeah, she'll freak out. We're almost through this. And then we're going to get to some crazy news. Boston, Caroline Termite. Oh, brought the T-shirt. This T-shirt, it says fire. She made her own shirt. Look. Whoa, there goes the Loch Ness Monster. It says fire. <laughs> it has a termite on the back. Drink a beer. It's better than any termite I've ever seen drawn. And it, it looks, because it looks super, its teeth are yeah. crazy, cr- cragged. Like, well, that's beer. what they do. Yeah. Did you know termites can fly? What? I didn't know that. One time, what? a long time ago <laughs> at the beach, uh, in Hermosa Beach, in my apartment, I was like, what are all these bugs flying around? I mean, I don't know. I'd never. And then my other neighbor came down, and he's like, fuck, that means there's termites in the whole building. I go, termites, what? Those are flying? What? I guess I thought they crawled like ants. They can fly. Just So all of you termites out there, just know you can fly too. If they can fly, <laughs> you can fly. You can fly. Um, and then, oh, yeah, this one was a good one too. Tatoes. I love Tatoes. There, it's the Irish snack. They were Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce from Joe and Patty. Cat treats from them. Delicious. Yes, Joe and Mary. We got goldfish. More cat treats. The puree. God, they go. Who knew? I haven't had a cat since I was like. Well, we had one at the lake in the Ozarks, but it it was just an outdoor resort cat. It just ran around, and there was so much activity. It didn't even care to come inside. Really, I mean, <laughs> occasionally. Lynn and John brought this marshmallow fluff. This is a big thing up there. Oh, yeah. At least. It's real sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet. I tasted it. It's gluten-free, though, so I'm going to send it to my sister and go, here, you weirdo. Here. <laughs> here, you can eat this. It, it's del- it's good. It's just very, very sweet. Nice. My mom would like it. Yeah, maybe I'll give it to my mom on Easter. No, I'll give it to my sister. On Easter? Yeah, well, that's when I'll see him. So, right. um. Lynn and John, marshmallow fluff, Cape Cod chips, beer. This sauce that I'm trying, it's called Aso sauce to make Chinese style barbecue ribs, pork, and chicken. Now, it looks sweet, but I'm not against sweet if it's cooked. I'm against oh sweet God. if it's raw. Raw. Yeah. Like there's some barbecue sauces that are sweet. Raw sweet. Wow. <laughs> Holy God. That. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's got to be cooked. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Here, Chaser. Um, <laughs> Jess and Macarena, if I'm saying that right. Um, wow. They got some cat <laughs> stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, and these, the Port City pretzels. These are from, technically, I read it, New Hampshire. Delicious. Is New Hampshire bordering Massachusetts? No. No? That's up way north, too? It does. It definitely borders Oh, my God. Ranch dill... Pretzels. You know, I read online and a couple people sent it to me too that old Smoky Moonshine was gonna um oh my friend Lorene sent it make ranch moonshine. Oh yeah, that's ranch that's whiskey. Yeah. And I forgot it was April Fools. I hate April Fools. Because no matter what, if somebody says something's gonna happen, you, you might get excited yeah. and then it's not happening. Nope. And then bad news. You think it's bad news for five minutes till you figure it out. Either way, the experience was shit. Yeah. It's just, I don't, I never have been, I've never been a prank person. No. I don't like those shows where we just, it's just mean. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I wouldn't want it to happen to me unless it was funny at the end. And most of them are not. No. But it also have to be a hell of a laugh. I believed it. The ranch whiskey. And I thought, yeah, I would try it. They should pay <laughs> attention to their social media response because we're all like, okay, oh, this is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And it was all bullshit. Boston, uh, John and Chuck, clown shoes. Clown shoes? Clown shoes beer. Oh, the clown shoes beer. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, I had Michael the Beer Monster Somerville with me. This was a bonanza weekend for him. (laughs) Oh, my God. And then I uh, 
because I left him with some too. Oh, the Voodoo Kettle Zaps potato chips were great. That's Boston. Maria brought those. And Castle Island beer and the pint glass. And then I'm drinking out of this one that actually, um, yeah, nice. I'm not going to say how I procured this. It's got, <laughs> it says Boston Red Sox. It's got the Red Sox and Sam Adams. It's and my neighbor is a huge Red Sox fan, yeah. um, her and her husband. So I'm going to. I'm going to mule this over there. I just wanted to show you that I may or may not have stolen something. <gasps> all right, so that was a uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that came backstage. We got it all. Um, and the, the, the children backstage. Yep. Everybody at the Wilbur, if you live in Boston, always support that venue. Yep. Taylor in charge of it is one of the most wonderful human beings and super fun. They're all fun. They jump out of the alley. Hey, Kathleen, we're so glad to see you. Welcome back to Boston. And I'm like, hey, John. Like, even if they're acting, I believe them. Right. Like some venues, you get some of the older guys, and they're nice, and they know what they're doing, but they're not, they're over it. Yeah. You know, they're 65. And they're just counting the minutes till they're out of that place. And <laughs> they've seen everybody and everything, and right. nothing's exciting anymore. And I get that too, but it's nice to go someplace where everybody's super excited. And having two shows. And Aaron in the boss, bo box office, uh, one of the children, mm -hmm. but one of the super smart children. Yeah. yeah um, it was nice to meet her. And James is cool. James is always great. And that's it. That's the shout out for all that. Let's move it on. Queen news. Oh. Tanya Tucker going in the Country Music Hall of Fame. Yeah. Boom. I would have thought she would have been in there years ago. Yeah. Honestly, after Delta Dawn. She should have been in when she was 14 because she did that at 13. Totally. Yeah, well, I guess she wasn't. Um, <laughs> I watched the CMT Awards. Oh. Well, I thought I was watching the CMAs. <laughs> and the only reason I wanted to watch because I thought Dolly was hosting oh, Queen right. Dolly with mm -hmm. Garth. Well, I'm watching the wrong goddamn award show. And I, wa <laughs> <laughs> I watched it for an hour and a half oh, where I'm God. like... And then in my head, I'm like, this is bullshit. Now they just hook you in and say, <laughs> oh, Dolly's hosting with Garth. And then they just come out and do the first thing and then they leave. So it's not really hosting. You're, you're a show starter. I made up that whole thing in my head. Right. None of it was true. I'm watching the damn wrong award show. And then I wanted to watch, it was a PBS thing. I didn't, I didn't record it where it's a PBS I forget what it's called, but it's a tribute to Joni Mitchell. So if you wanted to Google that. And that Annie awesome. Lennox sings. I saw oh. clips on Instagram. She sings um, both sides now. Apparently there was a big thing who was going to sing that one. Yes, Cindy Lauper's on it. Um, yeah. It, so if you want to go, you can go stream it. I read that. If you're interested in the tribute to Joni Mitchell. And all kinds of, you can, PBS.org or PBS something. I don't know. We'll find out and put yeah. it in the notes. Um so that's some queen news there. Uh, you can still see Dolly on the CMAs because those haven't aired yet, despite <laughs> what I watched. Um, and speak, speaking of watching, uh, Succession, still fantastic. Yes. Every episode. I can't wait to see my friend Mark Lynn Baker in the election one, whenever that happens. He hasn't appeared yet. Um, I never know like actor people, so to see somebody on TV other than a comedian, where I'm like, oh my God, that's my friend Sparky Mark. Um, <laughs> It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Very cool. Yeah. And I'm watching Yellow Jacket season two, but it's jumping a lot of sharks. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. It gives me weird dreams, but I would put up with the weird dreams. Weird it, dreams. Yeah. It's very scary. I would put up with it if it's just getting, I don't know. I'll keep going, but I feel like it's really spun out of control because maybe they didn't have a plan. It's getting weird. Yeah. yeah. I thought after the plane crash and they're rescued, eventually they'd go back to their lives and then we'd see how their lives unfold. And now it's just more insanity that I'm like, that couldn't happen to one lifetime. That couldn't m much happen to one person. So right. an anyway, uh, this is an update, but it's more informational. Okay. Uh, thank you to the children who found it for me. On Instagram, you can follow Robbie the Demon Dog. <gasps> And the videos are great. This man is a saint, whoever took this dog. And the videos are hilarious. So if you want to, I said we would find that out. And uh, we did. And we'll put it in the shows. I think it's just at, I don't want to turn my phone back on, but I think it's just at Robbie Demon Dog. Put it in the show notes. Put it in the show notes. Yep. Definitely worth a follow on Instagram. 
Um, update. Oh my God, this is crazy. So remember I told you about the guy, the Ch- Kansas City Chiefs football fan, and he dressed like a wolf every game. He was a ch- his name his they nicknamed him Chiefaholic. Mm-hmm. Well, turns out he was robbing a bank in every city the Chiefs played on the road, right. and that's how he could afford to go to the Chiefs games. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a creative plan, you know. <laughs> instead of robbing one bank, just rob a bank in each town for tiny amounts, right. just enough for. Well, he had been caught, and they put an ankle deal on him, and he's escaped. Back in December, Twitter was shocked by the news that Chief Superfan, Chiefaholic, real name Xavier Babadar, had been arrested for allegedly robbing a bank in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Babadar, who attended Chief Games uh, all over wearing a wolf costume, was released from jail last month on 80,000 bond and was told to stay in a Tulsa hotel until his next court date and eventual, eventual trial. Well, who's paying for that hotel? I don't know about that. And what hotel? hotel? How many stars? Is it on the bed? Is it on the bed bug registry? You know, you can look up all (laughs) hotels on bed bug. Yeah, I wish I had never known that. However, the saga took a wild turn this weekend when he apparently cut off his ankle monitor outside of Academy Sports in South Tulsa on Saturday, and he's gone missing, missing a court date and leaving both his attorney and bail bondsman in the dark. I wouldn't want to be that guy because then he's got to hire a dog, the bounty hunter, to go find this moron right this dog yeah this michael lloyd the bail bondsman who paid the 80 grand bond to secure his release from jail last month said the unit's tamper alert went off around 8 30 p.m <laughs> lloyd went to bar uh babadar's hotel though babadar lives in kansas city he was required to stay in the hotel as a condition but his room was empty i don't know anything about it i have reached out to him and i have not had a response it's never good <laughs> Good sign when your lawyer issues that kind of statement on the record, and it doesn't help your case to prove your innocence when you cut off your monitoring ankle in the woods, disappear, and miss a court date. <laughs> uh, um, why was why would he flee? Fl- uh, flee? Well, there's an array of reasons. The answer to that is unclear. We truly want the best for Xavier. I've gotten to know him, and I re- truly want to help him. This is the lawyer. Um, I don't know if they turn. He can turn himself back in. And get his legal things back on track. I would really think about that, Mr. Chiefaholic. Yeah. If you're listening, I would go back and say sorry. <laughs> you're going to be in more trouble because you did bad things. How but, old is he? huh? How old is he? I don't know how old he is. Oh. Old enough to so get a hold of a wolf costume. <laughs> it's a really good one too. There's a picture of it on here. Yeah, he's got his Chiefs Kingdom hat on. <sighs> well, all this. I mean, the Chiefs are good, but come on. Update, <laughs> update, update on the Tennessee drag world. Yeah! <sighs> Apparently, there's a famous drag queen. Follow me on Twitter. Trixie some Trixie Mattel? Yes. Yeah, I don't. I think you saw her in Vegas. Well, I might have seen her in Vegas. And I do sometimes on the road watch RuPaul's drag race. Mm-hmm. But I forget. There's so many on that RuPaul deal. I just mm-hmm. forget who's who. I don't even remember the name of the one who emceed the greatest drag show of my life, and that guy was phenomenal, girl, woman, whatever, uh-huh. as the drag queen. Yes. But then I looked up his um, the account where she is he, mm-hmm. um, whatever. He was a great MC. Yeah. Uh, his emceeing MC, skills were fabulous as the drag uh-huh. queen that uh, he she became. This is bad for you, Bill Lee, the governor of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not one into politics, but now everybody's in on this story. So <laughs> I'm going in. I'm going in. Because I see, yes, the drag show should stay. I don't understand. I still don't really understand why everyone's so upset that they, his, but I, what I do know for sure is I read Bill Lee's proposed law. Uh-huh. Way too vague. Way too vague. I'm going to tell you, a federal judge agreed with me. Yep, but first of all, Reba McIntyre slams Tennessee anti-drag law, blesses queens in high heels. Now, Reba doesn't ever get involved in politics. She has made it a point to say, I don't do it. I don't talk about it, blah, blah, blah. She's got, we got a real problem in this country. And to be worrying about men wanting to dress up with women, God bless them to wear them high heels. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. They're so, but hold on. Um, uh, let's center our attention on something that really needs attention. Drag queens have often impersonated uh, Reba. Reba, 
Yeah, yeah there's a lot of Rebas. She wow. said they should spend more time and energy on feeding the homeless children. That's right. Um, yeah. So now the next update, federal judge blocks Tennessee law restricting drag shows. No way. And it's a Trump appointed, appointed judge. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's not like there's some liberal, you know, off the wall Tennessee judge. Right. Mm-hmm. This is what he said. He blocked the law um, the day before it was set to go into effect. Uh, ju- by the way, that little Marin Morris, that country singer, uh-huh. she real mouthy. I mouthy. like it. <laughs> One time I saw her in, uh, in the parking lot in uh-huh. Nashville at the airport. She's even, I think, shorter than me. Tiny. Yeah, very tiny person. Yeah. Very yeah. tiny. Very tiny. Very tiny. Tiny. Tiny person with a very large mouth. She was on stage hooting and hollering in the, I'm going to dress like this and come and fucking arrest me. And like, wow, wow, the young country singers are te- crossing all the lines. Um, I think she's Texas. Is she Texas? Texas. Is she? Why was I think of that other ladies from Texas? There's a lot well, there's Texas. probably a there's lot, a lot, a lot from, Texas. from Texas. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big state. Yeah. U.S. District Judge Thomas Parker <laughs> granted a temporary restraining order blocking law enforcement of blocking enforcement of the law for two weeks, finding that it was both vague and overly broad. Right. right. Bill, get your shit together before you started going, here's a new law. It was it was unintelligible. Yes. Uh, the law signed by Bill Lee last month criminalized drag shows that take place in public. What the fuck does that? Of course they're in public. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just a crazy person in my house doing it for my own self, <laughs> which is also fine. It's a lot of effort. I mean, if you want to just dress up and... That's a lot. Yeah, they take hours to get ready. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of effort to not go anywhere. Exactly. Like, just walk into your family room. (laughs) Baby cat would look at me like, what the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, that's the law. If they take place in public or where they could be seen by children. Uh So, I guess that means, like, um, I don't know, a park or a parade or... Or, or, or. or. Anywhere. Right. Parker agreed with Friends of George's, the Memphis-based LGBTQ theater group, contesting that the law, this language could mean just about anywhere. Exactly. How does a citizen's private residence count? Or does a citizen's private residence count? How about a camping ground? Well, I don't know any respectable (laughs) drag queen that's at a campground. They have elevated it to at least where I can get a Bloody Mary exactly. and maybe a <laughs> mimosa. Trough of yeah. Or a national park. That's what I said, a park. What if a minor browsing the World Wide Web, who still writes that out, from a public library views an adult cabaret performance, Parker said in Friday's ruling. I love it too. There's the, they interviewed some of the old guys on the news down here, and, there, and a lot of the guys were like, I ain't never seen a drag queen in my life. I thought... Or maybe you did, and they were just that good. Exactly. You don't know you didn't. No. no. A tall woman. Yeah. <laughs> a tall woman. Um, Parker said in Friday's ruling, ultimately the statute's broad language is class- clashes with the First Amendment, the First Amendment's tight constraints. The judge acknowledged that the temporary restraining order represents an extreme re- remedy, noting that he does not take such actions lightly. If Tennessee wishes to exercise its police power and restricting speech it considers to be obscene, it must do so within the constraints and frameworks of the United States Constitution. The court finds that as it stands the record here that the legislator passed this statute. Um, it missed the mark. So oh. they can, so you can't do it anyway right now. Good. So there's better reprieve. Good. Somebody else did a drag thing to support them. Some straight guys in a band, a famous band, and now I can't remember who, but I saw it. Um, update. <laughs> remember, remember our shaman, our January six trader. Oh, no, yes. No, he got out of jail early. He's at a halfway house. Stop. He is no longer dressed oh in his shaman outfit. <laughs> Jacob Chansley, the Capitol writer known as QAnon shaman, is arguably the most recognizable January six defendant. Has been transferred from a federal prison complex to a halfway house in Arizona several months before he was initially set to be released. Federal prisons indicate that Chansley is currently at a residential re-entry management facility in Phoenix with the release date of May 25th. He was originally 
projected to be released in July 2023. So he's out a few months early. But the federal prisoners can earn reductions in sentences over the course of their time behind bars. (laughs) Um, So he's out. Oh, uh, according... uh, He did say... Oh, yeah, he said, yeah. Mike Pence is a effing traitor. He wrote this on the piece of paper he left behind. It's only a matter of time. Justice is coming. Um, uh, Yeah. He says he's not a dangerous criminal. I'm not a violent man. I'm not an insurrectionist. I am certainly not a domestic terrorist, he told the judge. I am nothing like these criminals that I've been incarcerated with. (laughs) No, I don't think you are either, Shaman. I think you're a special kind of crazy. (laughs) And it's not... Not within the realm of a normal crime, for Put sure. Update! Oh, my God. This is, un- this is another... <laughs> Carol Baskin. Oh, Come no. on. We're rewinding the clocks back to COVID Tiger King. Everybody remember Carol? Yes. That's why Joe Exotic is, is in jail, because yes. he tried to supposedly cooked up a plan to kill Carol. Mm-hmm. You know, all these people with these crazy private parks are going to be real sad about that Tiger King thing. Because it's exposed all this, and it has brought it all to light of what's really going on out there. Well, Carol Baskin's going to close her Florida animal sanctuary called Big Cat Rescue. And she's moving them, her big cats, to the Ozarks. Wow. But not to my Ozarks. Oh, not your Ozarks? Not my Ozarks. My Ozarks are the Missouri uh, Ozarks, which does include Branson, which needs a lot of help these days. Um, the downtown, I mean, not the golf, not bi- not the big Cedar Lodge. But she's going to the Arkansas Ozarks. Because when people say, what are you talking about? The Ozark Mountains are a mountain range, and they go down into um, Arkansas or come up into Missouri, whichever way you like to view it. Yes. Arkansas is more than welcome. They're more than happy. <laughs> Most of the big cats that are anxious to say they're Profiled in Netflix's Tiger will be moved to a sanctuary in uh, Arkansas. They've entered into an agreement with Turpentine Creek Wildlife Rescue and accredited, accredited sanctuary in Arkansas to move most of the big cats to Turpentine Creek, where we will continue to fund their care for the rest of their lives, Howard Baskin, Carol Baskin's husband, said in a memo. Oh. Once all the cats have been moved, the proceeds will go, um, and the property is sold because they're selling the property oh. of where the in Florida. The proceeds will be used to fund these species saving process, species savings projects in the wild. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah I'd like to see some receipts. <laughs> I think they're going to sell it and run with the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, judging by past behavior, oh, um, we've always said our goal was to put ourselves out of business. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> Meaning there will be no big cats in need of rescue and no need for the sanctuary to exist. Oh supporting our cats in larger enclosures in Turpentine Creek at a much lower cost per cat than we incur by continuing to operate Big Cat Rescue will free up resources to let us do so much more to save big cats in the wild. Well, here's the problem. In 2021, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill uh, called the Big Cat Public Safety Act to prohibit unlicensed people from owning tigers, lions, jaguars, and other wild animals. They should. Yeah. It should have been in place Years ago. You should have to know what you're doing. Right. Lawmakers introduced the legislation after Tiger King, the popular doc, doc, docuseries about an eccentric keeper of the cats in Oklahoma, drew attention to the issue. With the passage of the BCPSA Act, we expect the need for rescues to decline over the coming decade. If the need were going to continue at the pace we saw until a few years ago, we'd be making a different decision. Yeah. Yeah. And also, people don't want to support her anymore. I don't think they're coming there. No. Because everybody knows you're all... Doing bad, kind of, yeah. You seem like you're doing good things, but we don't trust you anymore. No. I don't trust you. I'm not paying to go to Carol's place. No. Nope. nope. Um, but this turpentine is going to take them. There's 35. That's expensive. Oh my God. Think of what they eat every day. Yeah. Christ, baby cat's plowing through treats down there like they're free. Loves the She's the tiniest cat of all. <laughs> Imagine a giant, giant baby cat. Just sitting there wait, oh. waiting on raw meat to be thrown into a cage. <laughs> <laughs> update! Oh <my> God. <laughs> this is an Elon update. Oh God. Well, it's very, very confusing. Uh-huh. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, I think Elon maybe has some sort of 
mental issues and sometimes doesn't take his meds. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Because the behavior is very erratic. Yeah. So for those of you guys who don't know about Twitter or whatever, um, I'll make this short and brief. You, If you're a verified person, meaning you're a public figure or a company or whatever, you were issued a blue check mark. Like I said, I don't even remember how I got mine, but I was issued one. Now they want you to pay eight bucks, but people who just want one can get eight bucks. You don't have to be a public figure. You don't have to be. So, well, he ruined the whole point of the blue check mark. Also, somebody had a good point on my Twitter feed. I looked up all these other Kathleen Madigans. They're all wonderful. We have done a good job representing this name. <laughs> There's one lady in Ireland. She seems like fun. She's one of the children. Uh, the smart one, my friend that I've yeah. met many times now, the other Kathleen Madigan, uh, is a financial, writes about financial things all over the globe. Very, very smart. Then there's another lady who really likes horses. Hey, you can follow any Kathleen Madigan and enjoy yourself. But the thing is, let's say you termites out there are following me. You're not following any other Kathleen Madigans, most likely. So if I tweet, you know it's me. So the blue check mark and LeBron James and all these people were like, we're not paying him $8. It's also so petty. Yeah. Are you that broke you need eight bucks from me? My, my nephews asked for more. Like, hey, you got 20 in your purse, and cat? You're like, eight bucks? And you think that's going to... He claims that 11, they've made 11, uh, something like $11 million off just regular people Stop. that have bought the blue check mark. I do not believe that. I haven't seen check marks by normal people's. Anyway, Saturday, but again, that was April Fool's, so I don't know. Uh, but he did strip the New York Times. He took away their check mark. No. He hates them. He hates them, that's why. Yeah, yeah, he hates them. Mine's still there. But and then LeBron said, I ain't paying him five. I'm like, five? I thought, I thought it was eight. <laughs> What's the five about? Five. So uh, this That's was supposed cool. to start on Saturday. Many t- Twitter accounts will lose a checkmark under modifications made by Elon, the social media company's owner. Individual users must subs- buy a subscription to Twitter Blue's service, which costs $8 a month, to obtain the badge. Businesses that are currently unverified will have to pay $1,000 a month if they want a gold check mark verifying their account. Nobody's doing that. No one's going, no, 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 no. He's, he's, I think deep down. Okay, let's assume Elon's smarter than all of us and always has a plan. Okay. That's what we're kind of told to believe. Mm-hmm. Well, then I think his plan is to de- destroy Twitter. I mean, because that's what he's doing. Blow it up. Yeah. Why? I guess because he saw it as a liberal enclave a gathering of liberals maybe because he's not i don't know i don't see it even half the time i don't i follow espn the cardinals other comedians i follow some of the uh, some termites back that i you know if i look at their thing it looks fun i'll follow them back yep. stevie nicks i mean it's not even it's not liberal depending on what feed you build but now that he's taking it over, I don't know how it's happening, but every day I have to see shit from Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you can put some conservatives in my thing and I won't mind at all, but right. not that lady. No, not that lady. <laughs> wow. Um, the move, which will help Twitter generate revenue by making certain features exclusive to subscribers. Here's the other thing. I don't need any more features than I already have. Right. I like it. Right. The way it was. I don't, but I don't like change either. I'm probably not the one to ask. No. I'd have a flip phone if I could. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a change person. Uh-uh. Um, but anyway, uh, for those of you who primarily use Twitter to follow celebrities and news sites, this policy, policy will affect what you see and read on the service. You may see fewer tweets from accounts that you care about in your timeline, for instance, because individuals who choose not to pay for b- Twitter blue will become less visible on the site. Why? Why am I less visible? Is he going to start? Is he going to? And then he's going to start taking away my followers. Mark Cuban said he's losing a thousand a day. I don't know. It may be harder to discern real people from phony accounts. No. No. And if there is a Kathleen, somebody makes up a Kathleen Madigan. There was a when this started. There were like ten of them that were fake, and I just I. You can also see when the account was created. All right. Um. 
If check marks are removed from the accounts of celebrities who are unwilling to play for blue, for example, it could become d- it's difficult to distinguish their accounts from impersonators. Musk said only posts from paid accounts and blue checks will be visitor. Oh, it'll only be visible in the for you tab. I've never even checked to see if I'm visible there. I don't care. I'm just here to speak to the termites. And then other people. I got so excited because I'm a golf nerd. Eamon Lynch is my favorite guy on the golf channel. Yep. Irish guy. And um, he followed me on Twitter. Nice. Yeah. Great. It was very exciting. You should follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, I should follow him on Instagram. I don't know. I just saw it on Twitter. I was very excited. But anyway. He's cool. Um, Smart. It's so anyway, Saturday, when do you have to start paying for your check mark? So if you're just regular termite, you can go buy one if you want. I don't know. I don't know why you would. No, eight bucks. The comp. That's for companies. The thousand dollars. New York Times said it wouldn't pay for it, and he yanked it. Um, other Twitter users may pay. May choose to pay for it. Why small businesses? It says that use Twitter want to market their services and reach broader audience. Mm, no, no. no. Um, Among social com- companies such as Meta and Snap, Twitter is the smallest social network, and company company continues to shrink in size and relevance. Ooh, he's not going He's not going <laughs> to like to hear that. Yeah. Oh, that's why he's mad. <clears throat> this article was in the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Musk has shed much of Twitter staff, leaving the company with fewer than two thousand employees, down from seventy five hundred when he took over in October. The site still has problems with bots posting spam and imposter accounts impersonating public figures. Security issues, glitches, and bugs are piling up. Some influencers and journalists are migrating to other platforms, including Mastodon, LinkedIn. LinkedIn isn't new. And that's work. That's serious people. I can't play in that sandbox. We'll make you a profile. I'll go on LinkedIn as a corporate. Well, I am the president of my company. You are. Right. Well, I'm a CEO. Technically, I sign papers that, and I laugh every time I do it. And then my brother's like, just sign it. Do you have to sign it like that? I'm like, would you prefer president or CEO, Pat? <laughs> I prefer ruler. Queen. Queen ruler. <laughs> update, update, update. So I'll keep you updated. So far, he has not taken away my check mark. As a press time. Huh? As a press time. Yeah. Um, so, remember I was telling you guys about, um, Ruja Ignatova, the yeah. crypto queen. Uh-huh. Well, she disappeared five years ago, as we, if you listened to last week, and if you didn't listen last week, she made up a coin, like Bitcoin, she made one up, everybody sent her all this money, she ran away with all the money, basically. Well, <laughs> this is crazy. They may now at least know she's alive, because of I thought the theories were she went away on a yacht, mm-hmm. and then I said, you know, eventually you get tired of that, though. She'll surface. Or this drug guy, a drug dealer, cartel person, had given her a bunch of money, and then she didn't have it to pay it back. And I thought I was voting mostly that she, he, she had been killed by them. Right. They don't fuck around. No. But I was wrong. Maybe. Wow. Maybe. Okay. The listing of a property in the heart of London has brought a notorious cryptocurrency fugitive who ran a four billion Ponzi scheme out of the woodwork. Bulgarian-born German citizen Ruja Ignatova, 42 years old, and a business partner called Sebastian Greenwood con crypto enthusiasts by claiming their crypto token one coin would be a Bitcoin killer. <clears throat> they started pitching it to potential investors in 2014, promised a five-fold and ten-fold return, and referred to their investors as idiots and crazy. However, I know, I know. And then the people still give them money. Idiots. However, in 2017, the scammer completely vanished as authorities circled in, and she hasn't been seen since. She's now on the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives and is currently on the only woman on the list. Police oh. have warned that she likely had plastic surgery to change her appearance with hopes, that, uh, with hopes low that she would ever be caught. But earlier this month... Ignatova reportedly came out of the woodwork to claim one of her properties. As a result, um, yeah, okay. As a result, lawyers representing Ignatova made a formal claim on the property, listing her 
as the apartment's beneficial owner in a filing with the UK's financial regulator. A change in the rules of Company House, the UK equivalent of ASIC here, forced Ignatova out of hiding as she had to be named in, the, in full rather than just her shell company. That is a great rule. Right. Because so many shell companies are buying shit all over this country. Mm-hmm. They're, they're ruining cities, yes. expensive cities like New York and San Francisco and Chicago because it's somebody's fifth flipping ha- home. Right. They're ghost ships. They actually call them ghost ships. These buildings where normal people could be, well, you'd have to be kind of rich. But someone could be living there. Anyway, previously, it's a good rule that somebody has to actually be the person. Yes. You can't just keep putting shit in shell companies and corporations' names and corporations that have no, they're not even real. Right. Previously, the property belonged to a company called Abbott's House Penthouse Limited based in um, Gumisi. Gumisi? I never heard of it. A well-known tax haven with very little government oversight. It meant Ignatova was kept out of the public records and land registry deeds until now. Prestige property seller Knight Frank advertised the property but swiftly took the listing down after it emerged it had that Ignatova had links to it. It suggests she is still alive, and there are documents out there somewhere which contain vital clues as to her recent whereabouts. If nothing else, it should make her easier for the authorities to freeze that asset and maybe even start getting money back to victims. Yeah, if you sold this thing, right. I think it's worth $14 million. Wow. Give some of the people their money back. Yeah. If nothing, uh, blah, blah, blah. the U.S. Department of uh, Prosecutions has charged Ignatova with conspiracy to c- commit wire fraud, wire fraud, also wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, and com- conspiracy to commit securities fraud and securities fraud. They actually said that twice. I don't understand why. <laughs> um, the FBI launched blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're desperate to get her hands. There's a $100,000 reward. That's not enough, guys. Nope. No. No. She, she'll give you hundred grand and not say where she's at right. if she's got all this money. Mm-hmm. She's possibly traveling on a German passport. Um, she's, she's possibly in the United Arab Emirates, Germany, Russia. They don't know. She's in a portion yeah. of the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, her co-founder also fled. He didn't stay very stay free for very long, though. He was arrested in Koh Samui. Huh. Don't ask me. Thailand. Gotcha. And was extradited to the United States where he pleaded guilty. He'll be sentenced in April and could receive up to 20 years in prison. She also left her brother out in the cold. Um, he took over the operation. He was arrested in uh, Los Angeles at the airport in 2019 when he tried to get on a flight to Bulgaria. So everybody's been caught but her. Wow. And she ain't helping. Nope. Yeah. That's an update, though. Mm-hmm. I guess she's probably not dead. Nope. She needs. Why would she need money, though? Unless she doesn't have access to all the money she stole. Right. That's a lot of cash. It's a lot. Um... You know what? This is part of the uh, this is part of the Elon one. There were two articles. Um, this one just says why he's screwed himself with this whole idea of how this is Twitter is going to make money. Right. Um, the LA Times is not paying for it either. <laughs> <laughs> he thought Gotta that he could turn verified out. badges into a key source of new revenue for making Twitter re- profitable, a goal that's surely growing more. Difficult as advertisers have fled Twitter en masse after Musk took over the company. But now key demographics that he would have hoped to have secured for paying the service, journalists, famous celebrities, and government workers might be checking out altogether. And that's because Musk unraveled the purpose of the very thing he wanted to make money off of. As I've explained before, before, Musk fundamentally misunderstood or disregarded the true value of verified badges to most people who had them. Their original purpose was for Twitter to confirm that public figures who who were who were who they actually said they were in order to combat impersonation and misinformation. The key was a feature which made Twitter a reliable news source. Verified accounts help separate trustworthy statements and reporting false claims, blah, blah, blah. That's more for the news people, though. Right. You know, whatever, CNN, Fox, whomever. Mm-hmm. He decided that the reason verified badges were important was not because they could verify identity, because of the way they signaled social clout. Nobody cares. cares. Nobody cares about that. And that he could cash in on this by trying to get a bigger network of people to pay for them. So now his, his, so now under his paid verification service, users' identities are not confirmed and blue checks can be distributed to anyone willing to open up their wallet. In any, in other words, he has hollowed out their meaning by keeping the trappings intact. 
but he's hollowed out their meaning, but keeping the trappings intact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, he, he, I don't think he understood Twitter. No. Like, he bought it like a toy. Exactly. Or, unless, he's the smartest person in the room, and his whole thing is to destroy it. I don't know. <laughs> Holy shit, they found it. Long lost ship found in Lake Huron, confirming tragic story. Even for the Thunder Bay area, a perilous swath of northern Lake Huron off the Michigan coast that has devoured many a ship, the Ironton's fate seems particularly cruel. The 191-foot cargo vessel collided with a grain hauler on a blustery night in September 1894, sinking them both. The Ir Ironton's captain and six sailors clabbered into a lifeboat, but it was dragged to the bottom before they could detach it from the ship. Only two crew, crewmen su survived. The grave, grave site has long eluded shipwreck hunters. Now the mystery has been solved. Officials with the Thunder Bay Marine Sanctuary in Michigan said Wednesday, um, a team of historians, water, underwater archaeologists, and technicians, they locate it, but they haven't told us till now, so don't think I'm this out of date. Okay. They located the wreckage in 2019 and deployed, deployed remote uh, remotely controlled cameras to scan and document it. The sanctuary uh, plans to reveal the location in coming months and is placing a mooring, bu a mooring buoy at the site. Well, now people are going to know, go look for the mooring buoy. Right. But there's also a lot of those Quite out there. Those. Yeah. They've kept uh, secret this the location secret to prevent divers from deserving the site before video and documentation is finished. Video shows the Ironton sitting upright, on the lake bottom, hundreds of feet down, no human remains were seen. Well, I don't think they're going to be intact from no. 1894. Huh. The lifeboat remains tethered to the bigger vessel. Oh, God. A poignant confirmation of what witness accounts from 128 years ago. Wow. Archaeologists study things to learn about the past, but it's not really the things we're studying, it's people. And that lifeboat really connects you to the site and reminds you how powerful those lakes are and what it must have been like to work on them and lose people on them. Yeah, so I, I would be scared shitless, yeah. especially at night. Um, so, I mean, one fateful night, on the fateful night, the Ironton and another schooner, Bars of Moonlight, were being towed up northward to, uh, from Lake Erie, town of Ashtabula, Ohio, by blah, 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 blah. You don't care about all that. No. But anyway, they found it. I can't wait to see it. Excellent. Nat Geo will do it. Yeah, they will do it. That's very cool. Yeah, I love Nat Geo. You know, they have the magazine for kids. I yeah. send it to all the nieces and nephews oh, under under age 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they think I'm a geek, but I don't give a shit. Cool. Yeah. Uh, holy shit, they found it. <laughs> Brothers discover million-dollar painting in a basement under their ping-pong table. What? How did you not notice you <laughs> set up your ping-pong table <laughs> on top of a painting? I will never, ever forget my brother-in-law, one of my brother-in-laws, going, uh, Kathleen, uh, before you uh, go on down to your parents' house, you want to send me, uh, help me set up a ping-pong table for the kids? It's a Christmas present. And I said, sure. I thought it would be like, I don't know, at the most an hour. Yep. We flip it out. It's got four legs, and we have to attach a net. Right. What? Well, he opened the th thing that has all the pieces in co plastic compartments and mm -hmm. then it has a cardboard back and he ripped it open and they all flew everywhere and I no. looked at him and I go what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> we needed those in those compartments right. to know and he bought a good ping pong table it is not just in that you got to put the legs on you got to yeah. put the wheels on you got to put oh my god ping pong <laughs> is not what it used to be nope. these kids have fancy ping pong tables anyway <laughs> the story of the Landau brothers and their unexpected inheritance is a fascinating tale of how treasures can hide in plain sight. I guarantee you we did not put this ping, -tong, uh, ping pong table on top of a fancy painting. No. The brothers, na uh, natives of Teaneck, New Jersey, were surprised to learn that a painting sitting under their ping pong table in their basement was worth millions of dollars. It began with their grandparents' estate, where their mother had kept a few items, including an old painting that had always creeped out Ned. After their mother's death, the brothers held a garage sale but kept the china, silver, and a few paintings they were thought were worth something. The painting of the men reviving a woman 
the woman made it into the boxes, which went straight into Roger's basement. Four years later, they called an estate sale guy to value the items. The value, the painting was valued at a few hundred bucks, and the brothers were happy with that. The brothers missed the auction because it fell on Yom Kippur, and they didn't expect much from it. The painting of the men reviving the woman started at 250, and it worked up to 800. Wow. Suddenly, a phone bidder from France joined in, and the price jumped to a hundred thousand. What did that person know? Exactly. And how do you know it? Eventually, a German bidder answered every bid by the Frenchman, and the bidding went up to $450,000. Ludlow's German bidder explained after the French buyer won with a $1.1 million bid that the painting was a Rembrandt. No. <laughs> and he had been looking wow. for it his whole adult professional career. Wow. The German guy. Wow. It would take a little longer before the Landau... Brothers learned about their strange inheritance. When they called up to ask how the auction went, they found out that the painting was one of Rembrandt's earliest works, part of a lost series on the five senses from the early 1600s. The Landau's grandfather had unknowingly purchased the, quote, sense of smell from an equally clueless seller at an estate auction before the Depression. The story of the Landau brothers in, in inheritance highlights se several important lessons. Firstly, that's not a word. It's first. Firstly. For, <laughs> it shows the importance of valuing the items we have and consulting with experts when necessary. The brothers in the estate sale guy did not recognize the painting's true value, which ultimately led to it being undervalued. Secondly, it highlights the potential for treasures to hide in plain sight. The painting was the family's uh, in the possession for decades, unnoticed and undervalued, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the painting that freaked out young, young Ned Landau every Thanksgiving has become his all-time favorite work of art. Oh, I'm sure cool. it is. Wow, yeah. That's, cool. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. And it's a Rembrandt. It's not even like, sometimes you can find these old ones that are some artists, but you never heard of them. So it's not as exciting. Even right. though if it's worth a lot of money, that's cool. But um, it's not nearly as exciting. Here's just a little something. It's sort of news. Researchers at the University of Texas at Austin have discovered a new species of ancient beaver in their fossil collection and they named it and something. They named it Bucky's after the gas station. No way. Huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. After the pop, it, well, I'm sorry, Texas Travel Center chain. <laughs> yeah, so an ancient beaver now got, Bucky got his namesake. I love it. Yeah, great. it's great. Mm -hmm. um, things are not so happy at Disney. What? It's not the happiest place on earth, especially not the next few weeks, and I feel very bad for any employees that are up there. Yep, make contingency plans. <laughs> Bob Iger's coming after you. The brutal layoff emails Disney CEO Bob Iger sent to employees today. This was five days ago. Okay. Uh, he sent an employee to the Disney informing them of the mass layoffs. They lay off 7,000 people. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to be... Uh, it already began in February, but they're going to put the pedal to the metal. As I shared with you in February, we made the difficult decision to reduce our overall workforce by approximately 7,000 Jobs as part of a strategic alignment of the company, including important cost savings measures necessary for creating more efficient, coordinated, and streamlined approach to our business. He goes on to say that affected employees will be notified beginning this week with leaders communicating to affected employees over the next four days. Then they say a larger round of layoffs is coming in, in April, with the goal being 7,000 cut before summer. That's I don't know lot. what's going on. Yeah. And they keep raising prices to get in. That's not helping. This is corporate, but I mean, yeah, they're not. It's not like they're laying Mickey Mouse off. We ain't got. We're not that bad. <laughs> not we're not that bad off. But still, you keep raising prices, and people are like, you know, maybe they're not going to want to pay that. Right. Maybe they're not. Um. This is bizarre. Well, I'm going to save this for the business thing because, um, because it it's attached. Well, I'm. I haven't done the, I haven't named the business section yet. No? No. Too much well, I've been busy, but I'll give it some thought. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take a flight down to Atlanta and get a car and go to the practice round of the Masters. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I will think about it. Fabulous. In the car, okay. driving. This is what I've been waiting to understand. Okay. Tiny sports segment. 
Stick with me even if you don't like sports. I don't like sports. I know, but some people don't give a shit about golf, and I understand that. But there's the PGA and then this new thing, Live Golf, created by Greg Norman, the angriest little man on the planet, (laughs) backed by the Saudis with all their Dexter money and blood money and whatever. Um, I kept saying, they kept announcing, very curious if you're even just any kind of sports fan, they'd say, oh, uh, the Saudis and the Greg Norman and the Live Golf have decided to give Brooks Kepka two hundred million dollars, whatever the figure was. It was always crazy. I mean, Pat Perez. Not My brother sure. Pat is better than Pat Perez, and then <laughs> Pat Perez got like a hundo, a hundred million dollars for Pat Perez. That's why I know you're not organized. And then you didn't take John Daly, and you said that you want to be a people person. Well, nobody's got more fans than John Daly, so you're full of shit on that level yeah. too. You want to sell tickets? Get John Daly out there. You know, I don't care if he's 50-something. People like to see he can still crush the ball. He's up (laughs) at my golf course all the time. He plays Uh barefoot. He's got a cig hanging out of his mouth and a giant drink of Coke or something, soda, something. And he's very friendly. But anyway, when they would say the amount, they never said how long is this contract for? What happens if you want out of your contract? Like football, every single new breaking news says, okay, Um, somebody else has picked up, uh, Ezekiel Elliott and the contract is for, you know, one year, the terms of the thing. Is he, is he an Eagle? Yeah. -uh. Uh Nuh-uh. Ezekiel Elliott's an Eagle? Yes. Really big deal. Oh boy. I missed that. I've been too busy trying to get my (laughs) master's bets in. You were in the the Black Rose. I was in the Black Rose. That's my favorite (laughs) bar in Boston. If you ever go to Boston, I have so many favorite bars in Boston, but shout out to the Black Rose. Their clam chowder. Oh, and their Guinness is the closest I've tasted to Ireland ever. Because Guinness doesn't travel. It doesn't travel well. And the further it gets away from the motherland, the thinner it gets. Yeah, yeah it just doesn't. They've tried everything to make Guinness travel. They put ping pong balls in the yeah. bottle of the cans one time. My uncle explained the whole thing, and I'm like, Whatever, ain't working. I don't know what y'all thought was going to happen. But nope. but anyway, I found out the answer to my question. Okay. Um, for, those who've pl- <laughs> for those who have played in the Saudi back live golf surf- circuit, if they want to break their contracts, this was my thing. What if you regret your decision? They, um, the penalty is two to four times their signing bonus. What? Right. Oh so if you got $100 million, it's going to cost you 200 to get out, Maybe four hundred, or you can face the Saudis who you made the agreement with, and go in a room and hope they don't dexter your ass like they did Jamal Khashoggi. Wow. Um, and the contracts. Do they, ex- take, do they take Bitcoin? They, I'm sure they take Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm sure they. Uh, you wouldn't call Ruja Ignatova and accept one coin, which was totally made up. Uh, and the contracts go to twenty twenty five. So these live golfers will remain in obscurity for a minimum of two more years. So that's all you people out there um, that signed up. Yeah, and I think some are regretting it. You think so? Yep. You think so? I do. Yeah, but that's finally, I finally found some terms. Like, what is the deal? Is that why you're going to the Masters? Uh, No, I'm going to the Masters because I really like to just sit at the driving range and watch them hit balls. I mean, I walk the whole course, too. Mm-hmm. And Ron will go, my friends will be down there. And the beer is cheap, and they have the best egg salad sandwich in the entire world. And I like the practice rounds because I'm too short to ever go to the real matches because mm-hmm. I can't see. Even Ron couldn't see. Really? Yeah, he's like, I'm six foot two, and I got out of there. I went to the 18th hole and went, this is goddamn ridiculous. Because unless <laughs> you go to that chair at 5 in the morning, uh-huh. say, whenever they open the gates, 8. Then you have to sit in that weird little uncomfortable chair all day. And then what if I have to go to the bathroom, which is going to be for every beer I drink, I have to go to the bathroom. And then I got to get out of that crowd. I'd rather watch the real golf on TV, but I I like going there. I just, I like the the atmosphere. I like the cheap beer. I like all of it. Who do you like to watch? Well, I like the old guys. I mean, my boyfriend, Raymond Floyd. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I doubt it. He didn't play in the par three last time. I always get excited to see Jack Nicholas, and he's prowling around there like yeah. the old golden bear that he is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like all, I mean, I like the young guys too, but I'm always amazed when it's a super old guy. Yeah. Like 
well, this is too inside baseball, but like one time Al Guyberger, he's the only guy that ever shot 59. And he's got it on his bag. And he came out. I could not believe he was still alive. <laughs> and he's super duper tall. Yeah. So he can't be mistaken. Yeah. He's tall, 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 string being tall. And his bag said 59. I've never shouted at anything <laughs> in my life, but I got so excited. I went, 59. And he turned around. Thank you, man. No. Yeah, I was like, oh, that was so exciting. <laughs> I didn't mean to heckle you. Sorry. 59. I was just got over stimulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to some crazy news for St. Louis. I like the pimento cheese sandwiches, but I only want one bite. Yeah. It's too rich for me. Too much? Yeah, yeah, I'll go for it. And then, I don't know, one time Ron goes, can you put this in your backpack? You're only allowed certain backpacks. And I had one. Uh -huh. And I put it in the backpack. And then like three hours later, he goes, can I have my cheese sandwich? It, had it was so hot and gross. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you can't eat this. No. This, this is going to make you so sick. You have to eat it all at when you get it. Okay. St. Louis Catholics have obtained St. Louis's holy toe. What? Yep. What? I'm not kidding. Like a foot? A toe off a foot. The oh. relic, a piece of toe bone, oh. Oh. came to the Archdiocese of St. Louis from Sicily. A toe bone. This is what we're doing. There's a new relic in town, and it may be the holiest digit to grace this city of sin. The relic now in position of the Archdiocese of St. Louis is purportedly a piece of toe once belonging oh, to St. Louis, Louis the Ninth, the French king for whom St. Louis is named. Yes, his toe. They have the papers authenticating the alleged toe, and the Sicilian, Sicilian Cathedral has good reasons for its claim. After all, King Louis the Ninth was on the shores of Tunisia in an ill-fated crusade when he died of dysentery in 1270. This thing is God. from 1270. People don't like toes. But wait, the end is really oh. funny. I know. After that, his body was dismembered. <laughs> Ever heard of Teutonicus? It was a thing. No, I haven't. No. And his heart and entrails were interred at the Cathedral Monreal. Easy to see how a bit of toe might have been left behind. Even the rest of his remains were sent on to the St. Denis Cathedral in Paris, which I've been to. It's beautiful. And now... Here the toe bone is in its possessor's namesake city. The archdiocese hasn't made plan for future toe showings to the public. Those wishing for their own glimpse of the holy toe should keep <laughs> keep an eye out in your local bulletin. <laughs> they have it in a this ornate thing. Gross. Like God. Oh my Did God! I well, I'm gonna make my sister go. Gross. Yeah, we got a hold of a holy toe, but this is where the Catholic the Church, toe. like, we don't need all that. Let's uh, let's stop all that. Yeah. I said I'd tell you about Jeff Bezos. By the way, Jeff <laughs> Bezos's yacht, the one. This is kind of an update because remember it was in the Dutch Harbor and he wanted oh, yeah. to he wanted to dismantle bridges to get it out and all uh, this crap. Um, he named it Koru, K O R U. Codenamed Y721. It's finally sea ready. It was spotted in the North Sea after leaving Rotterdam. Yep. He's out there. It has three decks, including one with a swimming pool. It requires a, it requires a 250 foot support vessel that houses a helicopter landing and pad for the Blue Origin founder. Basis Meta Yacht created controversy last year after the Dutch officials would have had to dismantle the historic. Koning Shaven Bridge because the 130 foot steel structure wouldn't allow the vessel and its 299 mass to pass through following an uproar. We covered all this. That's why you need to this is podcast. This is where the real news is. You want to know about a holy toe? I got you. Uh, it costs $25 million to run this part, this little party in a box. 25 million. Yeah. I don't even know if that counts gas. Maybe you ask all your your people for gas money when they get on. It's a pleasure. It can only accommodate 18 guests. That's a lot. This big requires a crew of 40 sailors. Do you think he has that many friends? <laughs> Do I think Jeff has that many friends? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough about his personality like you are forced to know about Zuckerberg and the rest of them. 
It's far from the world's most expensive yacht. That dubious honor is reserved for the 4.8 billion history supreme, a gold and silver yacht vessel featuring a Tyrannosaurus Rex bone wall made of meteoric stone. It was bought by an anonymous Malaysian businessman, according to the, quote, richest. I don't know what that is. He's got a wall made out of T-Rex stuff. I know, people lose their goddamn minds yeah. with too much money. Stupid. Literally lose their minds. You still um, can't see the stuff. Um, <laughs> this is going to be in the notes, <laughs> in case anyone wants to go look at it. I was fascinated. <laughs> this rare footage of the world's last remaining wild red wolves broke my heart. And it, it, I know, but don't worry, I have a feel-good story at the end. Okay, good. Red wolves used to roam freely from Texas to Pennsylvania. However, widespread hunting led to the death of many of the species. It became the first species protected by the endangered species of 1967. It's a heartbreaking tale made even more so because a video of wild red wolves captured at a wildlife reserve is probably the only time any of us will see these beautiful animals. So we'll put the link. I watched the video. Okay. It's hard to tell the difference sometimes with the red ones between them and a fox. At a distance, I would not know. I would guess, although it's taller, right. but they're they're very. It's a pretty red. Conservationists helped tried to help revive the red wolf population several years ago. However, the revival didn't work as planned. Estim experts estimate that only seventeen adult red wolves live within eight with eight found in North Carolina alone. While the video itself is mundane, oh, wow. the fact that I know only seventeen That's weird. Uh, total in the world. Yeah. While the video itself is mundane, the fact that these animals have been persecuted so intensely, it makes it gut-wrenching to watch. The red wolf is another example of how humanity has gone too far and it hunts down and destroys the animals that we share the planet with. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so if you want to see a video, there's only 17 left. I thought I should tell you where it is, and we'll put it in the notes. Um, we're going to go. Let's see what time. Okay. Um, I'm going to save this for next week. I'm going to tell you about the happiest countries in the world next week. Okay. Because, and then Finland, it always ranks number one, so that's not a shocker. They're going to let 10 people come to learn how to be happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I swear to God. But I'm going to save this one for next week. Because I haven't done my business. I should say business for the, p business for the common man. Business things that you need to know because you're seeing, looking at it every day. Did, haven't I told you about Bed Bath and Beyond? Yeah. And then you're gonna see the thing and go, holy shit, <laughs> Mama Termite was right. God. Um, J C Penney's. They're gonna close even more stores in 2023 as it continues to struggle with financial issues. I don't think that's a bad thing. Who's going to J C Penney? Nobody. That's a problem. I don't even. All I remember as kids, that's where our Catholic school, uh, my brother's pants were. You could get green or blue, navy or green. And then my mom would scream in a horribly embarrassing way, how do they fit in the crouch from anywhere in the store? Right. And then my brothers would run away. And, <laughs> but at the same time, if I was bored with their pants shopping, mm -hmm. right across the hoop, the aisle would be like chainsaws and <laughs> like maybe a washer dryer. Yeah. Didn't have that in Canada. Really? No. You didn't have tools and stuff and pennies? We didn't have pennies. Why do I keep calling it pennies and they keep saying penny? We called it pennies. Did you yeah. It's not Canadian. There's none in Canada? Nope. Really? Yeah. Hudson Bay Company or Canadian Tire. I know you have Hudson Bay Company. <laughs> Canadian Tire is one. I don't know, Penny. I just don't, I don't think of it. Um, they were closing, uh, this comes after the company closed hundreds of stores since 2020. They have a strategic, the closure is part of a strategic man to opti optimize and reposition its store fleet to have a mix of mall and off-mall locations as well as invest in digital platforms and customer experience. I'm telling you, malls are done, too. Now you're just hearing yeah. that from me. I don't have any proof of that, except that I travel the country every week, and I see a lot of abandoned malls. And me and Rocky Laporte one time, somewhere in Pennsylvania, they mm. turned their mall into a paintball war thing. What? It was so much fun. The whole mall? The whole mall. Oh so it became a strategic playground i mean That's pretty cool. it was really cool yeah. and you got a zone so like you're not like i need i'm i'm hunting rocky or rocky's yeah. hunting me and you don't want the whole mall because he could just go run and hide in the old pennies and i'm down at spencer's gifts right. trying to find 
They gave us a zone. It was a really good use of a mall, I yeah. thought, of a dead mall. There's dead mall. These malls are just, I think they got to think of something else. Penny's is going away. That's your business thing you need to know. Portland, Oregon, what is going on out there? I would have to text my cousin Tommy. You're losing your Cracker Barrel just when they got a liquor license. Oh, no. Get it together, Portland. <laughs> Cracker Barrel becomes the latest company to flee Portland. Oh, well, wow. maybe I'll ask Bob and Clark. Clark's family's from up there. Um, amid rising crime retail theft. They just got a liquor license. They've I couldn't believe it when the enough. server came up to me. She's like, welcome to Cracker Barrel. I had Louis, Louis was with me. And she's like, <laughs> would y'all like to try our sangria? Oh, Stop. what? <laughs> Stop it. I'm like, you got a liquor license, and the first thing you did was try to master sangria? Sangria. Holy <laughs> shit show. Um, they over, have over 600 locations nationwide, Cracker Barrel. They blame COVID-19 um, pandemic for its decision to close its final eateries in the Portland metro area. Eatery. Eatery. Really yep. It. <laughs> but it's retail theft. Come on, you guys got to get it together, Portland. Who's stealing from Cracker Barrel? One door in and out. Crime and homelessness has been a growing issue in Portland over the last couple of years. Um, over 2,600 downtown businesses have fled uh, a change of address w with the U.S. Postal System. Last year, a Nike store in Portland um, abruptly closed after a string of brazen shoplifting incidents. Some mothership. Is it Portland? Some mothership? I thought it was Seattle or Nike. Beaverton, Oregon. Oregon. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. All right. There's one other thing, animal-wise. Um, I like, I like well, animals. Well, I got an animal thing that's a good feel good, but this one, this is really weird. So all we do is talk about McDonald's is closing its corporate offices for an, an entire week. Because, yes, this week. Because they're going to lay people off all over the corporate layoffs, not like normal people. They're temporarily closing its U.S. offices this week as it prepares to inform corporate employees about layoffs undertaken by the fast food giant as a broader company restructure, restructuring. The CEO said they don't need to have 50,000 chicken sandwiches, and then they show globally the ones they have. There's, they have a lot of chicken sandwiches. I mean, um, but they are restructuring. But at the same time, this article, I read eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to streamline that. Well, I'm not sure they're all chicken. I don't know in some those, of these countries if yeah, they're chicken or not. Those ones over in the UK, um, the CEO is really pissed that they have too many chicken sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, that's on you, buddy. Um, he needs to he needs to cut back a lot of cost. Blah blah blah. But at the same time, McDonald's announces this yes. Canada. Hey. No. No. This is on you. Okay. Finally, a way to release McDonald's Canada. <laughs> there, we're closing our offices to have, figure out how to save money down here. You wackadoodle door the nurse. You plan to open adult only playgrounds at your McDonald's. Yeah. No thanks. The last thing I want to do is get in an adult plastic ball pit. That's great. Finally, a way to release our inner frustrations. Are they licensed? I don't know. They're gonna be opening twenty new playground adults across the country within the next four years. Now that's something you didn't see coming. That's what the article says. I didn't say that. In an unexpected announcement, it plans to open a select number of adult playgrounds within its already established restaurants. So there are cities include Toronto, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary. Excellent. Not to be confused with the kids only play place, play place. This will be solely for this is listen how cheese ball this is. You can get drunk and jump in the no, ball. you can't get drunk. <laughs> yeah, you can. No, you can't. They won't know. <laughs> the new upgrade simmer down. Will be for kids who are adults for are kids at heart. In an effort to promote its continuously push for healthy, active lifestyles, a chain that hopes to bring new and exciting ways for adults to let loose and heal their inner child. Look, if somebody's going to go hear their heal their inner child, that is fine. But McDonald's is not where it's going to happen. Oh you need to find a therapist and put real work into that. What's going to be? We at McDonald's Canada understand how much Canadians value having an active and healthy lifestyle. Well, you're at McDonald's. You've already con contradicted that. 
Not only have we updated our already delicious menu to include more healthy forward choices, but we're now taking the mindset that one step further with our new adult playgrounds. Why do children get to all of the fun? We pay the bills. We're the ones stuck in traffic. Adults deserve some nice, unproblematic fun. Customers 18 and older are required to make a purchase. Yo, you have to get a combo meal before entering the playground. One of those adult ones? Yeah. They must finish their meal before entry and save the receipt to show the attendant. Oh, my God. This is a lot. Well, no, why would you want to? No one's going to believe that. Uh, no. no. To ensure everyone's safety, you oh. must present your ID before entering. Once they're inside, they have the opportunity to enjoy the adult playground for up to two hours. Okay. What adult? In their right goddamn mind. I don't know. Kathleen, you were supposed to be here at 6. Where were you? Oh, I'm sorry. I got tied up at the McDonald's playground. I was there for two hours. <laughs> two hours? That's the max. I had a happy meal. <laughs> uh, here's what it has. It has an arcade space featuring Nintendo and PlayStation games stands, just like when we were kids. Uh, whatever. I mean, yeah. I, you can go find those in bars. I don't. Um, the playground wait. setup will differ depending on the location. Some may include trampolines. Oh, my God, that oh is the biggest God. insurance. Because my dad was a lawyer. Every year I would beg for a trampoline. Do you understand how quickly someone can become a paraplegic on a trampoline, Kathleen? Uh, I'm not paying. The insurance of a trampoline, uh, they may include a ball pit, a soft-serve station monitored by one of the McDonald's employees, soft-serve ice cream, and a few, a few may be equipped with a mini bar. <gasps> Only a few. And do you have a liquor license, McDonald's? In Canada, do you need that? I would think so. Although we have yet to know all the locations that will experience a new upgrade, we do know of one infamous spot. Toronto's Queen McDonald's location will undergo a complete transformation this year. It will see the removal of its second floor dining space to make room for the new playground fully equipped. And then what are you supposed to do with your kids? I mean, the reason I'm at McDonald's is either because I have my parents or little kids. I'd love to see your mom in the, a trampoline park. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're not. That is just, that is not a good idea. Look at Toronto trying to be New York. <laughs> yeah. Hey, an adult playground is called a bar. Right. That's what it's called. Yep. We don't need a trampoline. What adult in their right mind? I mean, define adult. I don't know. Let's ask the termites. Termites, would you do it? I have a feel-good story, and I have an animal story. This is awesomely, and we're going to put the link into this one. A photographer has captured the image of the elusive black panther in Laikipia, Kenya. The black panther is my favorite, I think, cat of all the cats. Sometimes I wish baby cat was black, like my sister's black cat, Cha-Cha, because then I pick picture that it's a real panther. That's a spicy Yeah. The two-year-old female panther, um, dubbed Giza by trackers, was first spotted around the Iwaso Narak River more than six months ago by excited locals. Uh, photographed at close range, it mar marks the first time the black panther, also known as a melanistic leopard, was snapped without camera traps in Africa. So they don't, just so people know, they're not, their coloring isn't black. They just have too much melanin, and it covers the spots. They still have, but anyway. Getting, to the, getting the opportunity to track and photograph a black leopard at close range alone in the wilds of Lycopedia, the park, Lycopedia, whatever, was both incredibly and thrilling, the photographer said. Uh, only 11% of panthers have this specific coloring, and sightings are very, very rare. They're also not nocturnal, so it's really weird to see one in the day. And we'll put this link in the notes. It's beautiful. It's just gorgeous. They used to have one at the St. Louis Zoo. They may still. First thing I wanted to see as a kid, take me to the Black Panther. Because it's just like uh -huh. so. Just the way they walk. They're magical. Um, Gisa, however, is used to people and has become more comfortable with having people and vehicles around her. Rare Black Panther was one of the two cubs born to the more commonly colored and regularly seen spotted leopard. Though The rare all-black coloring is due to an excess of melanin, which is the opposite of albinism, which only, which only occurs in animals, not humans, which causes a darker skin pigment. Yeah, she's, she's, she's just... Led by Ranger, the team to observe the giant cat in its natural habitat in an attempt to document and understand the, more of the cat's movement. They watched her across a river at sunset to begin hunting. Yeah, that's what baby wow. cat does. 
baby cats got a lot of nocturnal things going on. Um, I'll never forget at my sister's house one time. It was like two in the morning, and I was sleeping in the girls' room, and I kept hearing this noise. And I go, what is going on in the family room? Like, who's awake, or what the right. fuck is that? And the girls were like, oh, that's Coco. She plays golf all night. What? Yeah, they have a fat cat, a blush-colored <laughs> one. It's like a cool. light orange Coco. And she's totally overweight. Wow. Uh, Cha-Cha looks like a panther. Cha-Cha's perfect. And she, uh, she take my brother-in-law's got the, you know, the fake putting thing, uh-huh. and she just lays there because she's lazy and fat. And she just hits the <laughs> ball, and then it bounces Stop back it. to her. Yeah, all night. They're night. They get going on it. Anyway, um, it's not the first time a rare cat has been spotted. A similar sleek animal was tapped, was snapped in India's taboo. We talked about this in 2021. That kid took a picture of it. The last known instance of a wild black panther being caught on film was 2019 by wildlife photographer Will Barad Lucas, who spent six months trying to capture the melanistic cat in Kenya, eventually photographing it by using camera traps. Well, that's fine. All right. And then here's our feel-good story, termites. Don't worry if you're getting to be an old lady. If you are, you should move to the Philippines. The Philippines? Mm-hmm. 106-year-old indigenous Filipino tattoo artist becomes Vogue's cover model. She looks better than I do at 57. She looks bananas great for 106. They released its April issue on Friday, and its newest cover model is a 106-year-old indigenous Kalinga woman, Apo Wang Odd, also known as Maria Oge. Oge. Oge? Oge. She's from a small mountain village. Um, she's become famous for mastering the thousand-year-old batuk technique, uh, tattoo technique, which uses traditional... Uh, Methods utilizing charcoal and a sharp stick. She began learning the tradition at 16 years old. They said uh, the the Philippine Vogue Philippines wrote in a tweet. um, She symbolizes the strength and beauty of the Filipino spirit, heralded as the last mama, wait, memba batak of her generation. She has imprinted the symbols. Um, um, Signifying strength, bravery, and beauty on the skin. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Sure, her artwork has driven waves of tattoo tourism to Philippines, where people from all over the world visit her to receive one of her legendary designs. She has passed on her knowledges to her grandnieces. She's also tra- was, she's trained in the art of tattooing for several years. Her work has inspired a new generation of batuk, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, artists in the Philippines, the magazine reported. When visitors come from far away, she said, I will give them the tatuk buskalan for as long as my eyes can see. Yeah, wait till you see her. Yes. She's adorable. Cool. And she's funky looking. She's got like funky necklaces and there's your little feel-good story, Termites. Nice. There's a Black Panther out there somewhere. There you go. Now, where am I going? Well, Durham, before we get out of here. Yep. Well, I announced all the 2023 shows, all the fall shows, that's all on sale. Fun. Super, yeah. If I get one more text from one of my relatives, why are your tickets to $195? They are not. <laughs> You are on some freaky resale. Who do you think you are? If you see them and they're too much, it's not true. Don't just go to my website. website. And all the links I have on mine will go to the correct one. Because then I go check. I'm like, is this real? No, No, it's not real. Um, No, the tickets for, depending on where I'm at, they're anywhere from 35 to 45 to 55. If they go higher than that, that's a platinum seat. Mm -hmm. That's on you. Or you're on a resale site. Mm -hmm. Um, Durham, two shows. Do you know there's really a place called Niceville? I didn't. No. It's by Destin. Nice. Florida. Yeah, go in there. Ponte Verde, two shows. Charleston. I think that one's sold out. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. And Wheatland, which is really Sacramento, the hard rock. But, um, Durham, we added the sat- Saturday show. So if you went for tickets on Friday, which was sold out, uh-huh. where there's now a show on Saturday. Great. Yeah. And then if you want to see what's happening the rest of the summer and the fall, go on my website. Kathleen Maddox. Brand new website. Brand new website. And brand new podcast t-shirts on there for sale. A lot of termites already had them in Available Boston. Today. Available today is the new short sleeve one mm-hmm. that has, yeah, no, it's union emblem on it. Yeah, it's a good one. Cool. Um, no, I 
met for termites in uh, Boston because they just looked excited and they were down on the floor and to take a yeah the the people I'm like can you go get those people and I can say thank you for buying those shirts they were so excited it was the grandma and mom and then yeah. the kids there were four of them oh, yeah fine, that's cool. they didn't know why they were being asked to come backstage and then I popped out around the corner it's super fun <laughs> yeah it's fun to just rock somebody's world for five minutes for absolutely no effort on my part okay that's it termites um for you golf fans it's a big week it's the biggest week ever I don't know. The British Open is pretty cool, too. It's golf Christmas. But the Masters is just, it's just, yeah. And I can make fun of Jim Nance all week, which I love. Hello, three, friends. Three guys that you think might win. All right, here's who I think might win. Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Spieth. Yep. He's been on a tear lately. He has. And my third. Is Rory coming with us? I'll take Rory as my third. I do feel, though, Roy's had a lot of pressure dealing with all this live crap and all this stuff that I don't know that he's 100% focused, but he's got it in him. Yeah. It's just, is he focused enough? I don't know. There's been a lot of distractions. Yep. I'd, I'd probably, i got to go look at the, who they, the list of favorites. Yeah. I think Dor- Roy's, this, and it's going to be weird yeah. because Roy's been super mouthy about it. I agree with everything he says, and I, I'm, I salute him for saying it, but now you have to confront these people. Yeah. They're going to be on the driving range. The They're going to be, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stare offs and it's not, I mean, they've said really shitty things about one another. It's yeah. not just a polite gentleman's disagreement. No. no, it's gone to a whole different, you know, bone saw, blood money, right. like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, termites, shout out to Tanya for making it. Stevie's out on the road. You can go see her a million times. cher has been quiet lately. And uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. Hippity hoppity. Go we'll see the toe. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in St. Louis, try to make an appointment to see the toe. It's not just sitting out there. So don't get excited. Check your local bulletins. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. That's it. I like turbines. <laughs>